So how many of you have played Monopoly? Okay, good. I'd be a little surprised if uh, none of you raised your hands and a little bit hurt because, well, one, Monopoly is one of the most popular games in America, and two, it's actually based off Atlantic City streets. Um, yeah. So when most people think of Monopoly, they think of the table flipping rage that ensues when the other opponent has an entire, controls the entire board, and you can't really move without losing. And so most people think Monopoly is a game of luck, right? It's a luck whether what your opponent rolls, what cards they get, what cards you get. But I think I'm, gonna, I'm here to prove that Monopoly isn't just a game about chance. It's also about community chest. Yeah, OK. Terrible jokes aside, um, I'm actually going to be using, I'm going to talk about how you can use mathematic, mathematics to break down the fundamentals of Monopoly. So yes, your math teachers were right. You will, you will have to use math in your life, um, except long division. That's pretty much useless. Sorry. <laughs> um, so let's start with the dice rolls. Since we have two six-sided we have two six-sided dies. There are 36 possible outcomes. And you can see outcomes like 2 and 12 are going to, be, are going to show up very, very rarely. One, in thir one out of 36, in fact. And 7 is going to show up the most with a 6 out of 36, or a 1 in 6 math. And um, next to that, there's 6, 8, 5, and 9. So what we can tell from this is that your opponent is probably going to roll in that 5 to 9 window of numbers. And so we can see this. This is a graph of, of the amount of time, of the percentage that, this, that your opponent's going to roll, or you're going to roll. So you can see that 7 is, is way up there. But also 8, which, has the same which should, should have the same probability as 6, is a little bit higher. And that's because doubles. In Monopoly, if you roll a double, you're allowed to roll again. And since numbers like 2, 100, there's a 100% chance you're going to roll, roll a double on 2, because it's 1 plus 1. Uh, that means that, that the, all the ones after it, especially the ones falling 5, 6, 7, 8, or 9 after it, are going to gain a pretty, pretty big increase in their percentage of chance. So here we can see a kind of bell curve. And then we can see this over here, which is the rest of the doubles. And then down here is when you get into the, your third double. And it only goes to 35, because if you roll three doubles, that's called speeding, and you get sent to jail. So this is all of the probabilities, and you can see that you know, you have a big increase, and then it gets very relatively small. But as the board game's going to go on, and everyone knows Monopoly takes forever, that these, you're going to have a pretty much a good chance of seeing someone rolling a 34, or a 31, or a 29. Um, so let's, what does this mean? Well, we know that your opponent will most likely roll in the 5 to 9 range. So we have to use that to our advantage. You plan your moves ahead of your opponent. But Monopoly has more to that, right? Because if it was just rolling dice and moving around a board, every space would have an equal amount of chance of being landed on. But there's three things that affect the game. That's the chance cards, the community chess cards, and the go to jail space. For chance, here's the breakdown of all the chance cards you can get. You have a 1 in 16th chance of getting out of jail. You have a 3 in 16th chance of collecting money. A 8 out of 16th chance of moving somewhere else on the board a 3 in 16 chance of paying money, and a 1 in 16 chance of going to jail. So it's kind of symmetrical there. And if we include going to jail as moving around the board, that's a 9 in 16 chance that you're going to be moved somewhere else by chance cards. And so let's look at that geographically. Here we can see in the red sections, these are the ones where if you get that card, you're going to move there no matter what. And then there are yellow ones, which are it, move to the nearest utility, or move three spaces back, or to the nearest community chest, or nearest railroad. And so while you may be over here and you're going to move to this railroad, if you're over here, you're going to move to this railroad. Right? So we can use that, and we can look at that this row over here is going to be landed, these two rows are going to be landed on more than these two rows by chance. Now let's look at community chest. Community chest is kind of similar to chance. It has a 1 in 16 chance of getting a jail, get out of jail free card. 9 in 16 chance of collecting money, 1 in 16 chance of moving somewhere else on the board, that's to go, and a 4 in 16 chance of paying money, and a 1 in 16 chance, again, of going to jail. So these two, getting out of jail and going to jail, are very similar to chance. And we can see that it has a very simpler way of moving around the board. You can either go to jail, or you can go to go. Uh, or most of the time, you're going to stay on community chest, probably losing money or paying money, but that's not important right now. So what do we know from this? You should buy places that chance sends you to, because chance, because you're going to land on chance, and other people throughout the game are going to land on those spaces that you land on, right? So buy places chance sends you to, like the railroads, New York Avenue, St. Charles Place, Illinois Avenue, and Boardwalk. It's hard to remember all those names. I don't expect you to. But also, you should also 
the things that Chance and Community Chess that I brought up before, they lead you to jail. And that's actually one of the most important things in understanding Monopoly. Why? Well, because jail is one of the highest, jail has the highest chance of being landed on. It's this little gray bar over here, right? And why is that? Well, because you can go to jail from speeding, you can go to jail from community chest, you can go to jail from chance, or you can land on a space that sends you to jail. So it's the axis of the board. You're going to spend, most people are going to spend most of their time around or in jail. It's kind of depressing, but that's how it works. So what do we know from this is that you can look at, you can look at properties that are five, six, seven, eight, or nine, those, that kind of sweet spot of dice rolls away from jail. And that's the orange and the red spaces. And you should also invest in properties that are pretty close to jail, maybe in the 1 in 12 range, because out of all of the possible roles, those are going to be due more. So that's the little purple and yellow over here. So these four properties are the ones you want to invest on more. And that's in that second row and the third row, if we go back. Um, so it's the two rows that follow immediately after jail. And so to summarize everything we know, red and orange properties are the best investment. Why? Well, because red and orange not only are five to nine spaces away from jail, but they're also five to nine spaces away from places that chance sends you to or are on places that chance sends you to. So they're very good opportunities for investment. And if you can, collect all the railroads early into the game. Why? Well, because chance, spends you to, chance sends you to railroads. They're evenly spread out among the board. And if we go back to this graph, you can see that the railroads here are these tall little black ones. And they're, there's a pretty high chance you're going to land on the railroads. And if you own all four of them, that even increases your chance of gaining money every turn. So, yeah, and the second and third side of the board gets more traffic, meaning owning monopolies here is a prime investment. So now that you have these investments, how do you capitalize on them? Well, there are two things to know about capitalizing on your investments. First, you need to have investments that are cheap, meaning they're not going to waste too much money. And investments, and you want investments that can quickly have a high turnover rate, so you can quickly earn your money back. So many people think the best investment would to be build a hotel and boardwalk, but that's wrong. One, boardwalk is super expensive. If you buy it early into the game, you're going to have no money to invest anywhere else. And two, a hotel is actually decreases the, it increases the turnover rate. You're going to not get enough, you're not going to get enough money each turn to pay it back. In fact, the best investment house-wise is three houses on every space, no matter what space, except for Baltic and Mediterranean because they're pretty cheap. You want to build a hotel on those to gain your maximum investment. But if you go above three houses on, say, the orange spaces, you're going to be paying more for your investment and not going to be earning enough. And if you, pay, if you have one or two houses, you're still not going to be earning enough. So the prime number of houses to have is three on any space, no matter what. And the prime, and Park Place and Boardwalk, yeah, so to summarize, Park Place and Boardwalk may seem enticing, but don't go after them early because they can pretty much ruin your entire game. Two, owning all the railroads is extremely helpful. Three, the overall best investment in the entire game is a three house monopoly, like I said before, on the orange block, because it's the most landed on. And finally, plan your actions around seven spaces ahead of your opponent. For example, if your opponent, if you have a monopoly that's in the five to nine range ahead of your opponents, it'd be best to build houses during that time. If not, wait until your opponent gets around to that area, right? So because you'd be wasting your opponent, you're wasting your money if you're building, like, say, three houses on orange and your opponent is already on orange. He's just going to skip past those. And buy properties Chance sends you to, and buy properties that come after jail, and build houses in sets of three. So this is all the four things that we've learned today. And so why is this important? Who cares about Monopoly? Like, well, Monopoly is actually, was actually made to understand why uh, f a wealth sharing economy is better than the restrictive dominating monopoly that's showed in the board game. That's why we get so angry, because it's unfair. It's unfair for someone to own all the property and all the wealth. And it's bad in an economic standpoint for both people involved. Right? So monopoly can be looked at in a statistics and economic way. Right? But it doesn't even matter if you're looking at it through economy. Right? You can look at it through game theory, which has been used in a wide range of studies, from biology, psychology, philosophy, even monopoly. Mathematics is necessary to understand and apply to any field that you want to go into. It's important to know how you can gain an upper hand in anything that you want to do, no matter what it is, right? So it's pretty hard to get, understand how to do this. So I think if, y'all, <laughs> if you want to learn how to start applying mathematics, I'm always open for a game. <laughs>